question. Uh, I'm a social and peace activist. I live in the Santa Cruz Mountains in California. And um, uh, I organize events to the Muslim and non-Muslim communities here um, around things like your movie. And I also work with activists from Palestine and Israel around nonviolent communication and how to bring people together rather than apart. So I was wondering, actually, my question to you is if, if like, I would rent the movie to be screened to the community and I would, um, if, if it's too much for you, I would like take care of the whole thing and then maybe bring you after the screening for Q&A with the audience online. Or if you prefer to do it yourself and I'll be in the background. So this is how like I would love to spread the message of the movie because it talks to everyone. And I was thinking like, how can I do something like what you did to my local community and even to the world? Um, how can we organize that? Thank you. So that, that's, that's a great segue. I mean, I couldn't have planted a better question in the audience. So, so, so thank you for that. So um, before actually COVID hit, we were really promoting community screenings. Um, and we've had um, like, like hundreds of community screenings and I participated in maybe 30 or 40 of them. And, and my, my model was basically, it's grassroots. So basically uh, a, a synagogue in Montreal put on a screening, a refugee association in Houston put on a screening. Like, like I won't go through all of them, but there were a lot of them. And they just organized everything. And, and I came and I had a really interesting Q&A with people and discussions. So I'm really happy to participate in things like that. Um, so if someone wants to do that, uh, and now's the time to do it virtually, um, and maybe in a few months, uh, it'll be easier to bring people together. But that's a wonderful thing. So if you're involved in any type of um, uh, um, volunteer, uh, harmony work, peace work, whatever, and you feel the film or myself, because you can either have the film and then talk without me, or I'm happy to support it. Um, so that's always an option and that's always available. So thank you for asking. Um, okay, so what about a school district? Yes, um, I've, I've uh, done two, three schools uh, already and like one of the schools actually watched it. They brought one of their refugee classes with their advanced political science, uh, political science class who never speak to each other. And they brought them together, they watched the film, and then they partnered each other up and had amazing dialogue. So it's really, and there's other schools and education institutions that, that, that have done it. Uh, so I think it's, it's, a, it's definitely a, a great thing for, for schools and education. Um, okay, so then an, uh, uh, I managed an apartment complex for seniors. We screened it here and it spurred a wonderful conversation. That's, that's great. So email me these things. Um, that inspires me. Let me know if you do have a screening, if there was a great conversation. Um, I think it's, 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 it's really great to, to hear about that. So uh, Corina Kachmarek. I think. Can you get off mute and ask your question? Yes, Corinne Kazmerich. That was okay. very close. So, thank yes, you. thank okay. you. Um, yes, my name is Corinne. I'm from Washington, D.C. And my question I have kind of two questions that are related. So, my first question so, I guess, first an observation just quickly, and then, and then a question. So, I've I've noticed, and I study clinical psychology, um, so I am in a peer group with a lot of people who consider themselves activists. And they are all extremely well-intentioned people who really value diversity and cultural competence and are trying to be activists, especially at this time in our history. And I found that there's been a lot, there seems to be a lot of conflict about like the right way to be an activist and, I, and I've heard that that is kind of scaring some people away from this movement because they're getting criticism for how they're choosing to stand with 
um, you know, like the Black Lives Matter movement or other, um, other causes that they really want to be more a part of right now. So I guess my first question is, do you think that that is kind of a problem within like the social justice community that people think that there's like one right way to do it. And then my follow-up question is, how do we create a more inclusive social justice activist community? That, that's a really good question. Um, I, think, I think a lot of time, um, any, any type of um, good intentioned activity, um, always has a sense of, of a little it tends to slide into a bit of preachiness um, which which then um, kind of turns people off and sometimes you're not preachy you're just actually just coming and sharing and 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 sometimes you are right sometimes you you, you activists get this self-righteousness and 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 you know that the, it right so so I think it's really important to be aware of the conversation you're having and the person you're having that conversation with. Because um, if you're a victim or if you're fighting for a good cause, um, it doesn't give you the right to talk down to people and it doesn't give you the right to, to preach. Um, and this was one of the lessons that I had with, with Jason, who is the Christian preacher in the film. As some of you might have heard me say this, is that for the first three days, I was locked in debate with him because all I wanted him to acknowledge was there's beauty in other faiths. That can you not see that maybe there's beauty outside of your own faith? Um, but he would always take it back to, you know, Jesus is the only way and da da da. And he wouldn't acknowledge that and it would really bother me until I realized to my, to my horror that I was preaching to him as much as he was preaching to me, right? So I think by, by nature, we need to be, be careful even if we're right, are we, are we being kind? Are we connecting? Um, because it always comes down to the one-on-one -on -one with the person and how we're connecting with that person. And I feel as long as we don't lose the sight of that, um, then whatever we're saying can be magical. But I don't care how beautiful your cause is, if you forget the person you're speaking to, I think it creates a wall. Um, and that's the danger because when we're fighting for a good cause, we think we can't do anything wrong. Um, so I think as long as we're, we're doing it in the spirit of sharing and learning, um, because even if you're the activist uh, fighting for peace and someone is apparently uh, listening to that message doesn't mean you're in the superior role. And maybe to, to learn and connect is more important than to get your message across. So those are the things that I would, I would say. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, so, uh, Sandra is saying she'd like to screen it at, at her local library. Great. I mean, any, any time someone wants to screen it, um, please just, just send an email, uh, contact us through the web, uh, our web interface, um, our website, free trip to egypt.com. Um, we really want to get the, the, the film out. Um, so Dr. Stephen Fabic um, has a question. Debbie, with Steve? <laughs> um, hi here. Hi, hi Terry. So uh, first, I uh, would like to very much applaud what you've done and for bringing so much uh, positive energy to the world in this endeavor. And my um, first comment is, so I work for AAA in the travel industry and we really believe in the transformative power of travel. And something we did last year, which reminded me in a different way of what you've done, is we took 56 eighth graders on a trip to the Netherlands and Belgium, along with their parents, just to, so they would explore the world and, and have a more diverse experience. And that worked wonderfully. And so as we watched your movie, we really enjoyed seeing the connection there. And um, I also wanted to, to say that I am on the board of an organization called Tourism Cares. I don't know if you've ever heard of Tourism Cares, but it is an organization that believes in making travel a force for good 
And I think as, you know, if you're interested in looking into it a little bit and contacting us, I think we could have some offline conversations about how we might leverage the great work that you've done to get it in front of more people. For example, we have a, a meaningful travel map that is something about uh, bringing forward places and organizations that uh, use travel as a force for good. And I think maybe there's some opportunity there. That sounds great. Um, could, could you maybe um, uh, email me or contact me through the website so we can continue the yeah, conversation? Absolutely, I'll be happy to do that. <clears throat> absolutely, you. definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and has one too, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, just okay. quick, quickly, I may send you something too. Then um, loved the movie, and will be sharing it with my psychologist colleagues. Um, you know, uh, oh, for twenty twenty five years, I've uh, done a program called uh, "Us and Them: The Challenge of Diversity." Wow! And then "Us and Them: Moderating Group Conflict Across Diverse Groups." You know, in terms of religion, nationality, ethnicity race, uh, you know, socioeconomic, and looking at some of the common uh, things, that, you know, in, in some ways very similar to, to your work, maybe not quite as, uh, uh, in, in some ways as, as uniquely powerful as, as, you know, the movie I saw that was so, so moving and so um, inspirational. But, uh, and I want to share that with, you know, various psychology groups uh, I'm with. Uh, but uh, I may send you this format, you know, I don't know if you or, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a way of using uh, dialogue and, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, one exercise in there reminded me of what you were saying about how, you know, in terms of um, embracing diversity and probably the hardest kind of diversity for people like us to embrace is diversity of ideas or approaches like the the young woman you know psychologist in cal maybe california not sure uh said you know that's so tough you know it's easier for us racially or whatever but with ideas it's tough and uh and not and, and to do that in a way that's respectful like your your program you know so um Anyway, I, I applaud you for what you're doing. I just find it wonderful. Well, th thank you. Thank you. And I, and I think really, I mean, what I, I keep saying this over and over is one of the big blessings of this project for me is um, realizing how many people um, are like you in the world that want to see more harmony and connection and uh, and uh, it's very inspiring um, because a lot of times when we're just listening uh, to the news, it, it, it feels like you're the only one who, who wants to see peace in the world. Um, so I think one of the, the blessings and, and the good fortune of this is hearing what's going on out there. So I'm, I'm very happy to, to get emails and learn about other projects and, and be connected. So thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, da, da, da. right, okay, um, okay, so there's a lot more questions than I realized there would be, so let's uh, give this a little bit more time, and then what we can do is, in the breakout sessions, maybe you guys could, could talk about a few questions, if we want to continue this as, as, as a more Q&A than, than, than I'm, I'm happy to do that, but um, I just want to feel that we're all, we're all together and people are getting what they want from, from this uh, hour or so. Um, okay, so Tanya, um, I can think of several groups within our city to share this. Is there a cost to offer a community screening? Um, there, there is a cost. Um, we, um, but that shouldn't, that it's 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 negotiable look i i'm not really managing this very well from a financial perspective um but to be to be honest simply the the financial model is simply this um i want to generate enough funds that i can continue to spread the message right so so if 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 you know you're you're screening it at a school that doesn't have any budget then 
then we'll see. But I, I, I think people are generally goodwilled and, you know, some of the universities, they, they offered quite a bit um, for the speaking engagement, et cetera, because that's what their, their par is. So I, we usually have a discussion about that. Um, and any support that you're able to offer that can fund us to reach other people, because it's very expensive to get the movie seen for free costs a lot of money to get to that person who wants to see it, right? So it's not like just putting it on, on YouTube and then people come. You have to advertise and get to them. So we're trying to sustain the cost. So that's a long answer to, to basically saying, uh, let, let's talk about it. Um, okay, there's a user ID 59110MGR who yes. has a question. Yes, so um, I have a question. How You show in the movie how you actually connect, how you tried to connect with the people here to go on the trip, yes. but how did you get the participants over there? All right, yeah, so, so uh, basically um, I was open to taking almost anybody uh, from America because I'm actually taking them to Egypt, right? But the Egyptians, they were the hosts, so I would not want to gamble and risk anything because they had a responsibility of taking care of the Americans and making sure they were okay and safe and happy, etc. So I only um, uh, accepted applications from people who I knew personally, or I knew people personally that could vouch for them. So that was the, the, the first thing. And then the second thing is, uh, one of the things I love about Egypt is its diversity of population. Um, you have uh, Christians and Muslims, you have very secular to, to very religious, um, so I really like that about Egypt and I tried to make sure we had as much representation as possible, but of course we, we miss things. I mean, that's another question actually, which I'm going to slip into yours now is mm -hmm. that, um, I get the question, well, either why didn't you get a, a copt in Egypt or like a, a Christian population or why didn't like most recently, why didn't you take an African American woman? Uh, from here or a Latino or a homosexual. Um, so the, the thing is, this was a documentary and we were, we were go, you know, you saw the film, we were searching for people, we were looking, uh, things un unfolded as they unfolded. So we didn't go through a, 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 a saying, okay, we're gonna fit this sample size of this race and et cetera here. And on, on the Egyptian side, we actually reached out to the, the Coptic church for, for, for people for an interview with the Coptic Pope and stuff. And that, those un things unfortunately didn't occur. So we, we just tried, but we, you've got 300 million people in the United States. We're not gonna get every representation. And the irony is like there was a couple, um, why wasn't there a black woman? Um, and I understand the sensitivities. And one of them sounded really hurt about that. Um, so, so I told her, actually, I wrote her an email saying, well, it wasn't intentional. We tried. And the uh, irony was we actually did accept a black woman who agreed to come to Egypt and she was really good. She was from St. Bernardino in California, w went through the, a lot of trauma with the St. Bernardino massacre at the time and all that. So I thought it was a wonderful chance for some reconciliation. And unfortunately she had to back out like a couple of weeks before the trip. So a lot of things were beyond our control. Did you have the Egyptians before? Because you seem to match them really well. So did you have did you have the Americans first, and then you matched the Egyptians, or did it just kind of organically happen? No, it basically we got the Americans, we got the Egyptians, and then I just uh, let my playful child um, <laughs> come up with what would happen if, and it was this curiosity, yeah. and and that was just like the fun part is what would happen if you put Miss America with a woman wearing a full face cover, right? It was just kind of curiosity, so yeah. Yeah, it worked well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so if you want to reach me, just go through the website, freetriptoegypt.com, or I will type um, the, the one of our email address, info at kindnessfilms.org. I just typed it in. Um, oh, one second, it didn't work. Um, uh, 
Okay, so I will I will give another three four minutes uh, to the. I'll, I'll read some questions and then I'll um, we'll go into the breakout rooms and then come back. Um, what you said is very interesting about preaching back and forth instead of just listening to each other with no judgment. Thank you. Okay, quite a comment question from Julie Cooper. Um, can you talk a bit about the process of making the film? How many people applied to go? Um, uh, more than the group that you took and uh, choose? Uh, okay, how did you choose? If so, I would have loved to go. Uh, two, did you pick the activities or did the Egyptian guides do it? Three, how long was the trip overall? Did you meet with participants beforehand? Okay, so basically by nature, and, and I, I know this is horrible, but by nature we were trying to bring Americans who didn't want to go. Um, so by nature, it, we were setting ourselves for, for failure, but we were, I think we found that sweet spot in the end of people kind of reluctant, but uh, courageous enough to go. But to get that sweet spot was extremely difficult because we didn't want to take the people who were like, oh, Egypt sounds great. Um, I'm sorry to say, right? Um, so all the people that we felt met that sweet spot, we took. So there wasn't people that, that we thought um, that we had to say, oh, you're perfect for coming, but we, we, don't, we, we can't go because by nature that, that sample was, was very small. But of course, we got hundreds of people saying, pick me, pick me, I want to go to Egypt. But uh, the whole point was trying to take people that really didn't want to go, that were apprehensive. And now that we're known, that that wouldn't work. But back then, since we're not known, you know, people weren't kind of, they didn't know um, how to do that. So the trip itself was only 10 days. Uh, and that was really the power for me of, of like, like what still blows me away today is the, the, the depth of friendship that occurred within these 10 days. Um, and we worked with the hosts um, and the American participants. So it was kind of us, kind of the hosts and the Americans to talk about what each of them wanted to do or share, et cetera. And then it kind of organically um, took place and we, we, just, we just followed them. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cut us off now. Sorry about that. But what I'd like to do is I'm going to randomly put you guys into breakout rooms where, where you'll have a chance to maybe talk amongst each other. And maybe if you can, um, select one or two people that, um, that can represent your group afterwards. And then we'll see if it's more it, what people's ideas are. Do you want to talk more about the film? Do you want to talk about how we can bring the film to others? Um, how we can make a positive um, impact. Um, so I think it's, it's hard with, with the, such a diverse group to understand what, what, what we really want to do. So I'm going to break you up and I hope this works. And then uh, I'll give us about 10, 10, 15 minutes for discussion and then I'll, I'll bring you all together. So make sure you're, you're following the time. Shoot for 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to... We're going to be in about 18 rooms, uh, four to five participants per room. So ready? <laughs> we are... Just seeing if this is working. One second. So just accept the join and then
Okay. And there we go. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. So Hi. I, is, I, th I, I think this is it. That's probably Hi, everyone. I think you have to uh, unmute. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Take yourself off, uh, off mute. So um, I just have a question to all of you. What drew you to watch the movie? Can, can you repeat your question again, please? Um, yes. Um, what, what inspired you to, you know, tune into the movie? To watch uh, the movie? Yeah, because for me, I just saw... Uh, I don't know how I found the, about the movie. I just saw, then I just click on that, and because it sounds uh, as good about the easy, I saw the trailer a bit, and I like that trailer. That's how like we we watch. Actually, me and my wife we watch the movie. Hmm, lovely. So this is Celia, and I uh, I am actually scheduled to go to Egypt in October. I'm not sure that's. <laughs> Oh, I think we lost you, Celia. What's that? I think we lost you. You, you were, you're scheduled to go to Egypt in October. Yeah. Am I on mute again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah, it's mute. Now you're unmuted. Okay. Uh, Canada? I am in the U.S. Are you originally from Russia, too? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm from, originally from Egypt, like Tarek. Oh, hi, Tarek. Right. <laughs> I see. Let me get myself situated. I'm sorry. I was just listening and having my sorry. dinner. I had some problem because oh. because the person I don't know the person I wasn't connecting with her. I could, but now it's okay. But I think it was someone else. I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think I see oh. when I kind of scroll the screen I only see two of us here well I see Tarek as well but he's smiling mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not I, I don't hear him I, I, I'm not <laughs> here I'm just observing I'm, I'm coming, coming <laughs> oh, in and I see. oh come and join us <laughs> I mean it's it's a little bit awkward to talk uh, with stranger especially start sharing but maybe if we can um, talk about uh, ourselves just a little bit and then um, share what brought us to see this movie maybe that will be you know okay. so I had, pleasure, I had the pleasure to meet Tarek because I was working at the college La Cité in Ottawa the capital of Canada and through a friend of mine, Lisa Bro, who's also a colleague who worked at La Cité, who met Tarek, we were able to screen to students the film Free, Tree, Free Trip to Egypt, and Tarek had a Q&A with the students afterwards. We wanted to do the same thing at the University Saint Paul uh, with Tarek. They were very interested in getting the screening of the movie and uh, St. Paul is a philosophical, theological university. But unfortunately, COVID came in <laughs> and, and Tarek, well, decided to screen it on YouTube and bring this, this entire diverse community uh, together to discuss about the film. It's wonderful, it's wonderful. It is wonderful. I think so too, and I am. Uh, as well as uh, mention that, you know, if I do anything on my own, I'm not doing as much as I used to. But beyond that, I don't have any uh, ideas, Peggy, or. Oh, he's coming. There's Tarek. Oh, there's Tarek. <laughs> don't mind me, I'm just passing through all the rooms. Oh, we're just. Well, I, I do have a question for you, Tarek. What would be most helpful to you from the discussion? What would you like to know? Um, I think, well, for, for me, it would be useful to if people had ideas on how best we can utilize 
the film to create more conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. And do you already have um, promotional items like Facebook posts and other social media type things that people can pass along? Yes. Yeah. We have a Facebook group as well called Pledge to Listen. Um, so the, the best is if people are part of the Facebook group and they're signed up for updates on the website, then they get all the information and they can spread it. Good. Thank you. And I also saw a, a, a discussion guide, which was, uh, you had a discussion guide too. Yeah, there, there's a wealth of resources because yeah. we had a very big team last year. We had a discussion guide. We had a lot of things. We have a music video because a bunch of musicians came together and wrote a song uh, because they were inspired. So um, I think we're at a point where we really want to get these resources out and, and, and support. Um, but it, it's very challenging to communicate to the masses uh, what, what this film's all about. Um, so, so that's my interest, but I also, again, I think it's important as a community to understand what, what you'd like to see, because then we can meet. I, I have to say, I really appreciate the, the optimism of, of the, of the movie, of the film. Um, you know, because so much of this work is, it, 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 it you know, it's such an uphill climb, right? And, and, and so to, to have that, so for, I, I find it's, it's really, I've shared it with people in my circle who are people who are committed to this work, but who get discouraged to say it's worth keeping on, keeping on. So thank you. And Tarek, have you uh, worked through any school systems? Because this seems like a very uh, educational type of thing that, um, the right sort of facilitation with young people would really cause them to have some interesting conversations and help shape their thinking. Uh, absolutely. So, so we've got, we've gone to different schools. So I've, I've been to, to a few high schools and uh, it's gone through different universities from MIT to uh, uh, University of Laverne in California. Um, so it's all kind of piecemeal though. It's not something where we're, we're, we're you know, have uh, shown it to a high school district or, or something of that sort. But yeah, I get that comment a lot, but it's always through individual teachers and contacts. We might have gone, I don't know, 10, 20 educational institutions till now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. What about your science? Huh? Well, she's referring to the psychologist for social responsibility and in the 90s, I was president for a couple of years, an international group, mainly in the U.S., but other countries. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not as involved uh, with them mm -hmm. as I was. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but it does seem like if you can, you can get your cause in front of organized groups that have scale, then it'll start to get amplified, which is why I brought up Tourism Cares, because I think your, your values are in alignment with that. And so we can certainly have a follow-up conversation separately. That sounds great. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna... Go. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Go. You have to flow. Yeah. I was just thinking, does he have it in film festivals? Two thoughts that I had um, are really different from Robert, from your thoughts of like symposiums and big. I, um, <clears throat> what came to me were kind of like smaller things. And one is as it is made available um, to different uh, for community organizations or community screenings, I can imagine such a broad diversity of types of um, gatherings in which that might happen um, and like we've seen the film you know um, I would imagine that somebody would have previewed the film and decided to bring it to a particular community um, venue or something but to really ask um, the people that witness the film in that setting you know what do we want to do with this um, if it's a group an organization a community a church a, you know whatever 
you know, um, I think that each one of those types of, of gatherings might have a different feel for how they would want to proceed or how they would want to make it personal for their members. And so I think um, to personalize it in a small way for each group to define that for themselves, that's one idea. And then my other idea is also very small and personal, and that's... <clears throat> If there could be a way, and I'm just brainstorming, but if there could be a way to bring people um, together through a network or something where they could be matched um, through Zoom, um, you know, internationally um, or, you know, across um, uh, cultures or races or religions or geographies um, to kind of have a virtual version um, of that, like that, that could be a really cool thing to like, m to manage a network of interested people um, mm -hmm. that could connect and have like, just one on one kind of because I think I work with a lot of international exchange students and host families and, and I find that if you've had this experience with I think my phone's getting ready to die um, with one uh, individual, it, you can generalize it, you know, to so many other people that seemed like others, but they're not, right? Yeah, we might lose yeah. you because Sonia's phone is about to die. So Here, can you if, that? if we uh, if we do lose you, uh, we'll... I've been keeping notes. We'll, we'll, re <laughs> we'll rejoin yeah. uh, when, uh, when we have power here. <laughs> Super. Yeah, and there are like kind of two things that I heard. One most recently in regards to your point about starting um, these, you know, basically like matching up people with diverse viewpoints together to kind of put mm -hmm. into practice what Tarek modeled in his movie, right? Um, right. And he, he actually has a list of a bunch of organizations that do that. Um, so like Braver Angels is one of them. They're focused on like um, people who identify as like uh, Republican leaning or Democrat leaning and they have large um, uh, group discussions led by a moderator. Um, mm -hmm. And their goal is to, and, and they, they, have a, they have a very similar mission, which is to like listen and learn. Um, and there's actually a bunch of other organizations as well. It would almost be wonderful if there was some way to like unify all of them, because I personally found myself getting very overwhelmed by just like all of these different organizations that seem to have the same mission, mm -hmm. which is to promote conversations mm -hmm. among people with diverse viewpoints. There were like Benjamin Franklin circles and you know, um, like certain dinner types of conversations. And I'm sure all of these organizations are modifying their approach with mm -hmm. COVID. But at the same time, I think it may also be easier to co to connect a lot of people now, given that right. like a lot of technology has been upgraded to make it easier for us to connect virtually. Um, so like, yes, I, I agree that that's um, a really good idea. And there are, and it sounds like Tarek has um, kind of partnered with those organizations to help bring um to help give them like the to help just um like give them voice i guess and to so yeah they were listed um i think in the original invite that he had sent to this that was like where i where i found the list of those yeah um, i remember i think it was uh <laughs> nationalconversations.org yeah that's or, one of them mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah i remember him listing like eight or nine or something yeah like, there overwhelming. Were a lot. i tried to make a note of some of them mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> Christian. Hey, it seems like your your room is all along. <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. I don't know what happened. It froze, and I'm just trying to get I'm trying try, to get I'll home. Try, I'll try to assign you to a, to another room if you're still interested. One second. It's nice to sure. see. Sure. Uh, hey, good to see you. Uh, Interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to meet when all this stuff uh, <laughs> subsides. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, I'm putting you in a random room. <laughs> oh, putting the with the movie. Oh, hi, Tarek. <laughs> hey, Tarek. Hello. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just passing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually we, we're basically done, and we had very rich conversations about. Mm -hmm. the the time, the timeliness of this movie and how easy it is to spread it around either to our community, family, or organizations we know of. It's just paying it forward. And thank you so much, actually. This, hmm. 
very touching. I, I, honestly, my question as well for you, Tarek, is what I was thinking of is that you, you obviously, your demeanor and your approach and your attitude with people made this movement in a way uh, easy and made the trip successful. So if you wish like maybe to talk more about what you learned in your life that made you feel ready for such move or to direct such an amazing movie and bringing people together. It's, it's, it is like nonviolent communication and compassion, accepting others and most of all deeply listening. So I don't know if you wanna tackle this and talk more about it in the big group. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll see. I'm going to get everybody back together now. So, okay. um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what the feedback is, but I'd be happy to, to get into that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Derek. All right, ladies. Oh, oh, oh it says he's the host. Yeah. Ah, there he is. Good. We are back. Hi, Tarek. <laughs> there, see uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're muted. He's got us mute. We can hear each other, but he's got us. Yeah. Mute. No, oh, okay. I was I was muted actually. Sorry. I'm bringing oh. you all back together now. So this is this is I was kind of randomly joining groups, but now this should be the the big group. See, we did the right thing. Good. Should be back together. Um. So it was nice. It was nice to just kind of fly through the rooms and listen to some of the the conversations. Um, <laughs> before before I uh, I ask for questions, I'm going to put someone on the spot that I just noticed here, Katie. <laughs> uh, you all oh, remember Katie? Katie. Yeah. Katie, Katie Look, I know her. <laughs> so this is a very nice surprise. So I'm sure everyone's very happy to see Katie. So can you yes. unmute yourself and <laughs> be all embarrassed that I'm putting you on the spot? Unmute yourself. Oh, I, have her unmute. Unmute. Okay. I'll Hi, unmute. Katie. There we go. There we go. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get for not blacking out my camera. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's funny when I saw you there, it reminded me every time we would organize an event in Egypt, the first two people would always be me and Katie because <laughs> I live in Switzerland and Katie's military. So we were both very punctual. So it would always be, uh, so it's nice to see you. Um, where, where are you right now? I'm in San Jose, California. Right, so, so you had moved before then. And mm -hmm. That all worked out for you then? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Okay. Well, it's great to see you. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, on, on Sunday when we were showing the, the film, there was also a random person in the Q&A, and, and that was actually um, the, the Egyptian father of the family. Wow. With, so that was kind of a nice surprise. So it's, it's nice to see, uh, see the, our old friends. Um, so... I, I'll, I'll, we'll try to, um, to do this. Actually, maybe we'll still use the chat since there were like 18 groups. Um, and I don't want 18 people to try to talk. Um, but if, does somebody want to summarize maybe some of the thoughts of the group if questions came up or, or any, any ideas? Um, please just say, write a chat in, a message in the chat and we can take it from there. Um, okay, group six report, Sandra Lovelace. That's me. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Uh, there were four of us, two Canadians and two Americans, which was really great. And uh, we decided that what we would like to go forward with, we think a good direction would be to um, share consider to consider ways to share the film because there's got to be a wide variety of that and in that process to network I think networking is really important that's a that's a great idea um, and the more ideas 
So what we're trying to do now, uh, some of you might have also heard this uh, from, from the, the, the screening on, on Sunday, is that we're, we're really pushing our Rent for a Friend campaign. So if you go to freetriptoegypt.com forward slash rent, um, you basically um, pay $2 and then you get an email with a link and then you can forward it to any, any friend you want. So, so this is what we're saying, please pay it forward. So if you love the film, you feel inspired, just buy it for a few friends. You have to do it. You can't buy multi, you have to do it multiple times. And then if they like it, tell them to just buy it for a friend. And we're hoping that will be a way to, to get the film out there. Just go to the website or freetriptoegypt.com slash rent. And, and it's, we've really simplified the process. So I hope that, that that one works. Thank you. That's a great idea because those of us that travel, I mean, I've traveled, I've traveled more than 50 countries. And it's always great to be able to inspire other people to join you. And this in particular shows the value of travel. You know, the, the, the diversity or the divisions that start out through the, uh, well, yes, the hurdle of the divisions comes away just by people being together. They disappear and unity just happens. You know, the interface is so great. So thank you for the film. Yeah, I, I think what I've been learning is that um, we have too many abstract uh, debates. And when debates are abstract, we don't get anywhere. And you just annoy people and you get more polarized. But as soon as you're, you're talking human to human, it's no longer abstract. And you can feel, you know, that this person is, is, is you know, has a heart, is... is is human and and that this is the my whole lesson is realizing most of us are like that there are the bigoted people and they are there um, and there's no access to them but there's so few of those people um, that we can be nourished by so many other people that are different than us and yet have that that heart that that want to see good in the world yeah the commonality comes right up when you're face to face amen okay uh Stephen Booth. That's my husband. Okay. My, <laughs> Hi, Stephen. <laughs> my name's Lisa Booth. Um, and uh, I love the film. My husband and I watched it together. Um, I've shared it with our synagogue, our temple, um, hoping to get a screening there. Uh, but our group was talking about, um, you know, the importance of connection and so forth and human connection. I have a, a nonprofit, we're called World Education Connection, and that's what we focus on, just simple pen pal questions and, and prompts that get people to just feel comfortable sharing pieces of themselves. But um, one of the things that's interesting about connection is, is that once you get to a certain point, there's a, a, an area of discomfort that you sometimes travel through before you get to the other side and develop even a stronger connection. So we were talking, we were wondering, or one of the things we talked about was um, how, much, how much of the film that was shot that may not have been put into the film that was ended up on the editing floor, um, how much of that was some things that may have presented um, a negative depiction of Egypt or discomfort and then um, focusing on spending some time of how to travel through that space because it feels like in connection we travel up to a certain place where it's uncomfortable and then we often turn around because it's not a space we're used to it's not a space it's comfortable and we don't want to go there yeah and and <laughs> It's funny because a lot of people, uh, not a lot, but a few people, I get this comment is, you know, uh, you just you just edited out all the bad stuff and we would have wanted to see the, the more conflict and da, 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 da. And, and to be honest, I mean, we were hoping for more conflict. Um, I was expecting more conflict. Um, and, and at some point in time, I was like, why isn't there more conflict? What you saw is what happened, right? 
and it was it was it was really fascinating to me because I felt and 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 Katie can can tell me if I'm wrong, but I felt that almost every um, American and Egyptian pair just fell in love with each other almost like like day one. They just felt this this kinship. And I think it's I think it, it it's like if you take Ellen and Terry's story, I think the bulk of the transformation happened when they stepped foot on the plane when they made the intention to actually do the trip, I think that's like half the transformation was done already. And I think that's partly why it went so well. And what was really interesting though, is that every Egyptian fell in love with the American and vice versa, but there seemed to be a lot of tension amongst the Americans themselves. <laughs> that was really quite fascinating for me. I wasn't expecting that. And as I reflected, as, as I, think, I think we're more tolerant with foreign people. But if somebody is close to us, like, you know, it's, it's really, it irks you to see fundamentalists from your own religion more so than fundamentalists in other religions. I think when you feel a certain affinity to something, uh, you know, you feel ad an identity as an American. If someone is behaving as an American that goes against, it's, it's, it, it hurts you more than if it's just some, some foreigner doing it, right? So that's fascinating. And I think a lot of the, the conflicts in the world are between people who are, are very similar. And, and I don't want to start listing the, the cultures that I feel are similar because I don't want to, but, but you, look at, you, you look at a lot of the, these, these ancient conflicting cultures, um, there's so many shared similarities, um, which is fascinating. So yeah, but what you saw is, is really what happened. And I, I was asking myself that every day of the journey to the point I was wondering, should we try to instill some conflict? But we also didn't want to uh, manipulate things. Do you think that there was uh, less conflict because they were with people that were from the country? Do you think there would have been um, more conflict if, if the group of, if some small group of Americans were just traveling alone or um, just, uh, you know? Um, I, I think the fact that they were thrust to, they, they weren't living with each other, but they were spending the whole day with each other. I think human nature is you want to get along. So I guess it, it kind of forced them to somehow, you know, find a way. Um, but yeah, I, I really feel that as soon as the, the intention of getting on the plane was the first step in transformation. So. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay. Katie, okay, I was just saying that. That's nice. Okay, uh, group six report. Sandra, oh, did we, oh, we did this one. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, let me, no, okay, Lisa with double S. Hello, everyone. Hi there. Hi, Tarek. Shalom. Uh, so, uh, three beautiful ladies. Uh, and myself, and myself, I uh, two Canadians, and I guess uh, two Americans as well. Um, at first, we didn't know what to talk about necessarily, but I think um, I can summarize it a bit here uh, in three points. Um, it's a it's about a shift in perspective, and then going into action. Okay, um, one uh, one is openness to dialogue. I wanted to use the word mindset, but it was good that they clarified the word openness um, instead of just saying a change in mindset, because that could mean a, a variety of things. But if you just change the mind to, or open the mind to dialogue, then yes, that, that would be a first way to um, start, right? A starting point. And then engage. So that's uh, openness to dialogue, and then you engage in dialogue, and then you continue the dialogue. So I wanted to summarize, because it was all about dialogue, I think uh, I had a sense of where uh, we were talking about um, having actual conversation, actual cultural emotion. Like uh, Sandra had said uh, here, opinions change with exposure. Mm -hmm. we're, we're free to change our mind, <laughs> I think, because we're an evolving species. 
we're evolutive, right? Uh, we are not set in stone in a sense. The essence of who we are, yes, but not in, in actual living. Um, and that it is a practice and a, pre a practice and presence to other people. Um, concrete things that we could do, what we gleaned from from the conversation is we can look at other related films that want to unify, want to include, want to embrace. Um, there are a lot of books that we could read as well. Um, you could join a race or culture seminar, learn about others, um, and then talk to people. Like I said, uh, actual conversations, break bread. Hey, you want to have a coffee? So like me, I'm a Catholic, go to a, a, an atheist friend. I've had that conversation. Actually, I've, I've actually had a conversation with an atheist over uh, beer and wine. I shouldn't have had those two. So, because it was, I was kind of drowsy at work. But we did have a good conversation, a really good conversation. Um, and then travel, travel, travel. I can't stress this enough. Please get your airplane points for the Canadians. Uh, get some airplane points. Risk it. Uh, risk travel. I, I don't care. It's not a risk, it's actually an enjoyment. And to add, um, Familiarity does not breed content. I don't believe in that. Familiarity breeds curiosity. The longer you're curious with the other person, like what you did, Tarek, with the with the lady who said, "No, no, no, I don't want to go," you know, at the Trump rally, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But you, 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 you instead channeled curiosity. Then you asked her why. Like, why is the sky blue? Because of this. Why? 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 Um, so that's how you continue the dialogue until the message is planted. So those are just a few things. And I just wanted to plug my, I just want to plug the same types of conversations that are happening right now. Cause I had this, this today and I just want to share quickly with everybody. Uh, I had a, I had, I met a Sikh activist today online. So she's an activist, but we prayed, we prayed online. Okay. So for those who are a, Afraid of being an activist, that is not a bad word. In fact, as a Catholic, I am activist in a sense of my faith. Um, but she was, she, we were praying together with uh, another lady who was uh, Hindu, I believe. So if you want to read books on these ladies, these women that are changing, mind changing the dialogue about in being inclusive and being open to others, uh, look up Valerie Kaur and Priya Parker. Priya Parker wrote The Art of Gathering, which is what, Tarek, you pretty much managed to do here. You've gathered us. Uh, and Valerie Kaur is a, is a sick activist, a civil rights lawyer, who is talking about seeing, uh, see no stranger is her book. So okay. um, basically uh, those things. And so Tarek, if you write a book soon, I, I, I'd love to buy it. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> right, so those are, those are the things that we learned in the group. It's just... Um, be, be open to dialogue, engage in dialogue, and continue the dialogue. I, I think that's that's great, and I, and I think I think as well. Um, I I don't think we need to change a lot of opinions. Um, I think we just need to um, go beyond the misunderstandings. I I, I have this feeling um, that we have created this this massive misunderstanding uh, across the world. Um, and if we just took the time to listen to each other and understood where each other truly are coming from without changing each other, we're going to say, actually, you're not so bad, <laughs> right? I really believe that. This is my personal experience of, of going across the United States and having those conversations with people like that. Um, the bigoted people are very few, but the challenge is sometimes the good hearted people use similar language, right? So, so Terry and Ellen and Brian, um, they all believed in building the wall. They all believed in the Muslim ban. They all voted for President Trump. They all, you know, they, they had certain characteristics and so did some of the people at the Trump rally where I felt they were bigoted. Um, not the lady I spoke to who, who, who said those outlandish things. I, I, I felt there was still access to her 
but some other people, um, no access, no eye contact, no listening, nothing. But the majority of people, there was. And, and that's, this, that's the, the trick, because as soon as we hear certain trigger words, we just assume they're racist and then, and then we don't listen anymore. So, so this is what I think really gives me faith and hope, is that I think if we just clear up these misunderstandings, um, we're going to be in a much better place. Um, okay, now I'm doing a mathematical calculation about the number of groups and the time. Um, so um, I'm happy to stay as long as it takes. Um, so we'll just go through. Um, this is, I, I don't think we've, uh, you know, this is a new forum, right? So, so I apologize for not being able to structure it exactly the way um, it happens. Uh, feel free to stay on. Um, if this discussion is inspiring, feel free to, to send me a mail afterwards if you need to go and you have something to say. Um, but I would like to hear from all the groups. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll continue to do that. Um, okay, uh, Kathy Chaprio, uh, I'd be willing to summarize. Is that Orange County? Yes, Kathy Shapiro. Thanks, Tarek. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your, your Zoom is spelled wrong. <laughs> oh, I did. You're right. I didn't spell my name right. Thank you for correcting me. I was going to say Shapiro, but I didn't want to assume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's Shapiro. Thank you. Um, so I don't remember our group number, but we um, have four of us, um, Doug, Sacha, Lucy, and I. And we basically, a lot of this has been covered. A lot of people have brought up. We, we, talked about different kind of aspects and we kind of have this feeling that we want to you know go forward in getting more um skills strategies to apply this in our lives um in today's in our society today of how we can listen to others and how we can not fall into the traps that many of us do which has been mentioned of like it was beautiful how you mentioned um when you were in the movie trying to convince in the movie trying to convince the man who was Christian, and then you caught yourself kind of doing the same thing as he was, and, and it's those traps that um, I think um, we fall into to wrestle with the questions to how to to approach somebody and, and let them know we support them with um, and understand their pain. To um, somebody brought up a good point about Satya brought up that um, sometimes when we ask somebody a question, we're not really wanting an answer. We're wanting to make a point and not listen to their answer. So there's a lot of um, traps and, and it's just more, um, I think um, that was kind of the essence of after our shares of wanting to see how we could move forward in applying what was in the movie to our own lives. And that sounds great. Um, and, and I had mentioned and I had sent out a, a number of organizations. One, one group was asking uh, me uh, what I personally, personally did. Um, and it's, it's hard to summarize my whole life of, of being kind of in the middle of cultures. I think that really helped me, uh, you know, build bridges and understanding. One powerful tool set, and a few people have mentioned it, so I will, I will call it out now, is, is nonviolent communication. Um, I was fortunate in Switzerland, uh, Marshall Rosenberg had come uh, many years ago and, and gave, gave a workshop. And I, and I really like the concept of the thing that I take from nonviolent communication is that you don't hear criticism. You only hear the needs that someone is trying to express behind the perceived criticism. And I think that's, that's a really nice way of, uh, of going through the world. Uh, very difficult to practice uh, with, with people who are close with you, but, um, but I think it, it, it is an offer. And there's so many other things out there, but I just uh, keep thinking that the tool set of, of nonviolent communication has, has, has helped me significantly for sure. Um, okay, so we, okay, we have the, the group, group 11 from 59110 manager. Are you still with us? Okay, we can come back. 
Okay, so Peggy, you're saying you've encouraged people to chat or send ideas. Um, okay, Lori is saying we thought it would be a good idea to screen the film in churches and synagogues, but we realized that we would still have the challenge of trying to show it to people who didn't necessarily want to watch it. And how would we attract them and make them feel comfortable? I, I've got a lot of stories about that, um, and it's worth it. Uh, it's, it's really worth uh, going through that. Um, I, I had, um, don't want to name names, but there were, there were places where there's, in every community, there's the people who, you know, want to build bridges, uh, see humanity in, in, in everyone, and then there's the people that have been hurt and are a bit more distrustful, right? And I think if there's if there's those that want to take the risk, then then I'm the magic can really happen, and and I'm ready to to talk to to all those distrustful people and and have the conversation because um, you know I I think I can I can hear beyond the the fear and criticism and and it's worth it. It's worth doing. If there's anybody who uh, is in a challenging community that wants to bring the film there, um, let's, let, let's do it. Um, because the whole process of transformation, a lot of these screenings had uh, as much film content as the film itself. Um, so, yes. Um, how can we get people to listen more during a conversation? It's too easy for people to sit in their bunker and state a position. How can I listen and entice someone else to stop and listen to? That's a good question. Um, and um, I think usually, um, this is from Christian Colking, so I'm going to quote uh, something. Um, I used to work for the same company as he did a long time ago. So. Um, Stephen Covey wrote the, the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, all the old people remember this, like me. Um, and one of, the, one of the, the big habits that always stuck with me, I forgot most of them, was uh, seek to understand before you are understood. And I really believe if you manage to make someone feel listened to first, and it might take like an hour. <laughs> Some people really need that. When they finally feel listened to and understood, um, they usually will, will then listen, right? But if they don't feel understood, they're too reactive, they wanna be heard, they wanna be heard, they wanna be heard. So if, if, if it's in that state, you, there's no point in trying to get your message across. Um, I, I was going, I was at the Trump rally, as you know, I had my Make America Great hat on to, to ease my access to, to the people there. And then I crossed over with the hat and I was, I crossed over to the anti-Trump demonstrators. Um, and some of them were, were kind and shook my hand. Others refused to speak to me because of this hat. And I remember specifically this one man who just wouldn't, wouldn't uh, refuse to shake my hand and um, just started yelling at me and and say just get out of here we don't want to hear you and da 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 and all this stuff and then I go um, don't um, wh I was saying well, well you know why and he's like you're you're wearing a racist hat and da 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 I go well look beyond the hat maybe maybe there is a chance for dialogue and he's like no 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 and then I'm like well why don't you listen to me and then he's like, no, why don't you listen to me? And then I go, okay. And then he's like, just get out of here, right? So sometimes there's just no access, but I think it's worth a chance to try to listen to people first. Um, okay, so uh, someone's asking about the trip financing. Um, so in 2003, I had established a company and then a few years later, I had other companies. Um, and then I basically got um, my, my companies to, to support the, the financing. 
uh, when you rent the movie, it's basically, you're, it's available uh, to watch one time within two weeks of purchase. Um, and it's confusing because the email says 24 hours, but I think we've corrected that. You have two weeks to watch it within, within yeah, yeah, that's why there's a few people asking about that. Okay. Katie, someone's asking, are you still in contact with your host family? Are you there, Katie? I am. Yeah, no, I asked her, she just had a baby. And that's, <laughs> you know, and it's so funny because I know I'm sure her mom was very happy that <laughs> she finally had kids. So, but I, I was like, you know, it must have just been the right time for them. And I think that's great. Yeah, it's always funny when you were saying about her grandmother, uh, her, her mother knew and was just trying to make, make you ask you to vote to influence yeah. her to have kids. Tell my so. daughter she can have kids. You yeah. know that they're good things. And yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think about her a lot, you know, and I think about her mom a lot too. So it's definitely nice to see her doing very well. And especially she's doing very well in her career. So Great. she's done quite a bit, put out another book too. And so done some really and won some awards so she's done some amazing photo work okay i didn't even know that see no. oh, that's <laughs> nice to hear um okay uh i think it would be interesting to use the film to start a conversation um okay well that's great i won't read the full comments because um just want to try to get through everything. Uh, our group was very interested in paying it forward by renting for a friend and screening for groups. A few of us are also very interested in facilitating discussion. Okay. Great. Um, well, like I said, I mean, pay it forward. Uh, if you want to do online uh, screenings, uh, Q and A's, whatever, let us know what we can do to support you. Um, someone's asking about the languages. So the, the, if you use the regular rent link, um, there's no, it's only in English. Uh, we have on the website another link which, which has subtitles in Arabic, French, German. Um, I'm forgetting a language, but I think, uh, yeah, Arabic, English, French, German, maybe something else that I forgot. Okay. Okay, if we're friends. Okay, a few people are leaving. Um, yes, I will be sending the link on how to watch this recording. I've recorded this one. So, um, Sandra, the conflict among Americans, there's a sense in which when we come from the same culture we want, expect, fellow citizens to understand and have empathy for each other. In a different culture, there's an awareness and acceptance that others won't always get um, what we've been through, so we can, can't expect them to understand. Differences in the environment nurture a natural openness to accepting and appreciating differences between each other. It's true. Okay, we have a summary for group four. Nashwa Khidr. If she's still here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. I, I was in group four with Tony, Virginia, and Karen. Uh, I'm from Egypt, but I'm in Vancouver now for my graduate program. And we had a very interesting uh, question, uh, discussion. They were asking me as if I'm a representative from the trip, <laughs> but I'm actually <laughs> just watched it with you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we discussed many interesting uh, topics. So we, we really discussed the, the issue, like the idea of traveling and trying to meet local people, not only being, not only going to the touristic areas. Um, and we, and I realized many of us, like many of the people in the group were actually just saying they have been trying to do more of the uh, dialogue with people in their communities from different uh, re religions and different ethnicities. Um, I was asked if, if, the, if the movie, uh, someone mentioned that the movie uh, didn't really present uh, Muslims in, in Egypt. And I said, no, actually, like it's, Egypt is very diverse. And we, I saw this personally in the square during the revolution. I was involved in the revolution in 2011. And 
in the in the 18 days when people had to to sleep over together in the square they got to know each other and and they started realizing oh i i used to label the other or treat him as someone else and all of a sudden they realized they they were all fighting for one cause so they started getting together and and we did mention this that like people from within the same country need to have more of these interactions um yeah and i guess that's it um yeah yeah Another person's suggestion, I'm, I put it in the chat, that uh, I think people in grad schools need to do more of these interactions, watch the movie to, to get to know people from other cultures. And maybe I invite you, Tarek, to, to maybe after you, you're done with this phase of exploring, the, of going through the conversations, maybe you do other movies with people from different countries. And I think this would be very insightful. Yeah, yeah there, there's a lot to do and uh, people are... are have given me a lot of suggestions on, on what I can do afterwards. Um, so yeah, uh, one, one, one step at a time. Thank you for that, appreciate it. And thanks for representing the film in Egypt and your group. <laughs> um, okay, okay. we've got, uh, I love to volunteer at our local ESL school. It gives new Canadians a touch point for a friendly old time Canadian. That's great. I agree okay. with the importance of travel, sorry. I raised my hand virtually, so I don't know what are the protocols. <laughs> okay, uh, well, it's hard with the, the raising hand because I can't see who, who, who came first, but hey, welcome, please, Homera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, uh, sorry, I joined late because um, uh, by default, I'm an activist, so I was at a rally. Um, and then I realized, oh, there was a reminder. <laughs> so anyways, a wonderful uh, initiative by you, that film. Uh, the moment I read A Free Trip to Egypt, I watched that film. I signed up for the viewing and then I watched it. Uh, I, I belong to the tourism industry of Pakistan, which was the most neglected country and uh, very bad image in the Western media, corporate media, uh, as Egypt uh, had... Uh, so I could easily relate to that. Uh, so when I came to Canada, it was 9-11 afterwards, and then I could never take any trip to Pakistan. So that was always my dream, that uh, I want to open that country. It's called the best kept secret of Asia, but then people all, always have negative image about uh, that country. Their perceptions are not, uh, as, as you say, that um, fear of unknown. So when they don't know people from that place, and uh, then they have fear. But whenever uh, somebody travels to that part of the world, they always admire that uh, we have so much more in common than uh, you know, the fears. So uh, I would like to offer free trip to Pakistan if anybody wants to join us and uh, we'll take guidelines from you because this is a brilliant idea. And uh, I, um, I know that whoever visits uh, visit that country, once they come back, they always want to go again. And uh, I recently went to Egypt. It was on my bucket list. And I was uh, in Egypt uh, in December. Oh. Amazing, amazing country and uh, beautiful people, uh, beautiful culture, very hospitable. And I could just sense Pakistan in there. I don't know why. You speak different language. We have different cuisine. We have different uh, uh, clothing and everything. But I don't know. The moment uh, I landed at the airport in Cairo, I, I could just feel like it's, uh, it's just like Pakistan. So I still have to find that connection why I had that <laughs> feeling. <laughs> but uh, I love the music. I love people. I love uh, the diversity. Diversity was very visible there and I loved it. And uh, I really want uh, these kind of uh, forums to open uh, ways for people to connect more. And I appreciate the idea that you are taking this conversation further, not just viewing of the film, but you are bringing people together. Thank you so much for that. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Great. Well, um, people that you've got a free trip to Pakistan there, apparently. So, <laughs> um, okay. So where were we here? Um, Someone is asking, what is the ratio of women to men in this meeting? Everyone's always, always noticed that there's usually a much higher ratio of women um, to men in, in, in 
the meetings I conduct. Um, and I'm not going to extrapolate why. And uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, so Peggy, um, group two. Is Peggy still there? Uh, I am, um, but okay. I already typed it in. So oh. we were just talking about ideas. Right, okay. Um, okay, some people need to go, need to go. Uh, okay. Okay, some people are explaining. I'm really scanning quickly to... Uh, Okay. Corinne, did you want to talk about your strategies? Well, that's very kind of you. Um, I'm afraid that it would take too, I, I don't want to monopolize the rest of the discussion, so I'm happy to disseminate them in some way. Um, I, I tried to make them very specific. Um, and yeah, they were kind of inspired by the training that I've had as a clinician, which is to show people, you know, unconditional positive regard, empathy, non-judgment, things like that, which are things that I have learned are quite effective at developing trusting relationships with people. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I, even, although I would love to share them in this context, I also don't want to, um, monopolize this Q and A, which is, I think much broader than this, but I'm happy to disseminate them to anybody who is um, okay. interested. Well, I appreciate uh, <laughs> respecting the space. Uh, you can also put contacts if you would like to uh, tell people how they can access it in, in the chat dialogue. Um, so agree to listen before being heard, great. Um, okay, there is Earth 911 community. Um, I don't want to just read these chats to you um, because you all can read what's in the chat too. So I'm just searching for people who had comments. A lot of Katie fans here, yay. <laughs> have to go, have to go. Okay, so I think, um, I think if people just uh, want to just say anything more now's the time to do it just go off mute and hopefully there won't be too many people and then we'll have a few parting words um and then we'll we'll just wrap it up i have a question yes okay yes please yeah, yeah okay. go on. so my question is um when you first had the a seed a vision for the film how did you go about um, sharing it with others and bringing them along with the vision? And can you talk a little bit more about the collaborative process um, in, the, in that um, manifestation of the vision? And um, lastly, were there any setbacks or obstacles that you had to overcome? And um, where are you now in this moment? Um. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Great questions. Uh, so I guess it was uh, November 2016 was when I had the, the first uh, inkling of wanting to do this. And it was January 2017 when I said, I'm doing this. Um, and um, every step of the way, there's been challenges. Uh, so it's very hard to say which, you know, every phase. Um, um, so... So basically, I think the, the, the start was, um, yeah, getting the right team on board. Um, and it was through coincidence, through fortuitous events that, that the right people came on board. Um, but it took a lot, of, a lot of patience, a lot of calling. Um, like one example was um, uh, looking for, for the director. Um, 
it was eventually a friend of a friend knew how hard I was trying to get uh, a production company. And then she connected me to the, the Ingrid who ended up being our director. And that was just really an amazing connection. And Ingrid was all about, you know, bringing the humanity of people. Um, I realized it was going to be a huge editorial challenge. Um, so I looked um, for the contacts of, of the best editors in the world. Um, the, the one who like, won the Oscar for uh, Bowling for Col Columbine and Fahrenheit 9-11. And I found his contact information and I just continued to call him until he, he, he agreed to, to speak to me. Um, and then he spoke to me and he thought it was a crazy idea, but he was kind of impressed. Um, so he agreed to be a consultant, but he wasn't going to be the editor. Um, and then when we finally went to Egypt and we came back and we did it, he's like, you did this thing. You managed to get five separate camera crews. And that, like, I was telling him all what we were going to do. And he, I think he didn't really believe we were going to do it. And then when he, when, when he saw the footage and he saw that we actually did this, he says, okay, yeah, I'm in. And, and him, and he knew someone who edited uh, an Oscar nominated film, The Square, which was about Egypt. So the two of them, along with Ingrid, were really the force of, of editing. And it was just through kind of coincidence and luck and, and, and yet perseverance at the same time. So, and I think um, it's important to, even though it was something that I was funding and doing, I was also looking for people who took ownership of the cause. And, and that was very difficult because it A, empowered people, but B, uh, created a lot of everyone's feeling responsible for it. So there's a lot of conflict uh, as well. I mean, we all had our, were very strongly opinionated about which scenes should go in the film and what should be edited out, et cetera. So it, it, it was not an easy process. And then, and then when we finally, and it was 250 hours of film footage. So you can imagine, um, you know, uh, I, I watched all those 250 hours, right? And so did the editing team. So um, it was, it was a, there was struggle after struggle. And then of course, when you finally finish the film, it's, um, it's, I don't want to, uh, diminish giving birth, but it's like, you know, I think um, when you're, when you have your first child and your wife is pregnant or you are pregnant, um, you know, you think about the nine months and like the, the, the birth is the end point <laughs> and you don't realize that that's actually the beginning. And it's the same with the film is that you think once you're, you finish editing, the film is done. And that was really when the works begins because uh, then you're talking about distribution, getting it out there, et cetera. So that, that, that led to, to a lot of, a lot of challenges and uh, here we are now. So it's been, it's been great. And, you know, we've had, I don't know, 40, 50,000 people watch the film, which is really wonderful um, for an independent film. Um, but it's funny because the more people watch the film and the more inspiring comments that, that people send you, the more it increases your desire to get to the millions because you feel, okay, this, this film, there are millions of people out there that would love to have their hearts open, that would maybe be transformed, impacted. And, and then, so that's why it's, it's nonstop. So, um, yeah. That's, that's a, the, the long answer to a short question. Um, Thank you. Good, good. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Um, any other final words or questions? Tarek, I'd like to say something. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. This is a great conversation. I've been thinking a lot about how to make these kinds of conversations less theoretical, like to really because I think lasting change comes from uh, the conversion of the heart, right? So this film opens our heart, okay? You, you've done an amazing job with this film. And I think this film could be a tool to go further as, as you're doing, right? With very pointed questions for individuals. So that we, okay, so where do we stand now after seeing this film, right? Um, with regard to 
uh, kindness, with regard to tolerance, with regard to acceptance of other, and to make it experiential. Because when it's experiential, it becomes lasting, right? And so if I don't know what the objective is, is it to um, make the film known or is, you know, I think it's to change also to have it have an impact in our hearts, right? Which it, it does already. And then to make it lasting, I'm just thinking like, you know, a workshop style, like using questions around this uh, would be really cool. <laughs> Personally, I think it could be amazing to do that. Absolutely. And, and this is why my vision was to work with these national organizations in the United States and Canada to, mm -hmm. to you know, I was telling them, we'll start the conversation and you'll continue it. Um, so we're, we're early stages and, and that's why I, I promoted some of these organizations because I think they're doing amazing work. Um, but we haven't, we haven't found that rhythm yet on how we're gonna work together, right? We're all kind of, you know, I promote their work, they promote mine, but I'm looking to really partner with organizations that have grassroots work that facilitate conversations, et cetera, but I don't have the answer yet. My, my vision would be to work with these organizations um, to, to, to generate awareness about what they're doing and then people would have, you know, if they saw the film, they could, you know, join the National Conversation Project or, or you know, something and, and take that energy further. Um, but we haven't matured enough in that mm -hmm. sense. So that's why I'm doing these calls. This is the first call like this where I'm brainstorming with you it, to, to, to figure out, because you're right, um, I don't want to just spread the film and, you know, everyone has a nice feeling and, and then it fizzles mm -hmm. um, but I also I can't I can't uh, disperse myself too much either so I need like a focused goal and I need to find the right organization to really help that I mean there is a, uh, an organization in Quebec that's doing these these right before COVID hit the caravan of, of dialogue or something like that like in the wake of, of the Bill C-31 uh, or whatever it is. You can see I'm not living here long enough. Um, and, and they wanted to use the film as a conversation starter, right? And then continue that, right? So yes, that would be wonderful. I don't know how to do it yet, whether I need to start creating uh, the, the infrastructure so people feel connected or I can join with other groups so I'm not reinventing the wheel. That's... Where, where, where we're at. Good. Um, I'll give three more comments and then we can start saying goodbye. <laughs> or we can just start saying goodbye. <laughs> Ty. Great. Yes. Hey. Lisa. Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Have you applied for the uh, pluralism? the Global Pluralism Award? Um, no, but um, the week after you sent me that mail, someone nominated us for it. Oh, really? Someone besides me? Okay. Yeah, complete coincidence. Wow, so we've, we've, awesome. We've been nominated for that. Okay, so, good. thank you. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I think that uh, could be a way, right, to, yeah, maybe a connection that can be made to move it forward, the conversations and... Yes, no, I think it's a good idea. I have, a, I, I just, uh, to be honest, I had a problem nominating myself. Uh, yeah. Right, so it's, it was just a bit awkward. Um, but if my, so, so I had that dilemma and then the next week someone called me up and said, do you mind if I nominate you? And I said, oh, that's funny. Someone just suggested <laughs> this, so. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Great, well, um, if there is any last words, please just yell out, otherwise um, I will. Uh, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> um, my name is Janelle, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, in you were talking about um, the potential of uh, reaching broader audiences. So you said 50,000 people have seen it. 
and you know what would one million be like um is there any potential to have it picked up by like streaming services like netflix or um you know uh, there's many these days but uh it, has that been looked into i i'm curious Yes, it has been looked into. It's very hard to, to get in front of Netflix because they only deal with uh, aggregators or people that they already have a relationship with. So we were very fortunate enough to get it in front of Netflix and they passed. They said it doesn't fit their documentation strategy or something like that. So, and uh, Amazon we're still in discussion with. So there's... Um, yeah, it's it, we're just plugging away at every kind of angle and people ask about festivals. Yes, we've applied to the festivals. We're continuing to apply now to the second tier festivals because uh, the big ones only take premieres. Um, so we're, we're doing our best there. But um, I think the, the other thing I think you all should be aware about is that last year I still had a large distribution team. I, we had... A, 15 people and this is when we had uh, the film uh, the pledge to listen day of unity in June 2019 and the film was shown in 500 theaters across the United States and it was really amazing we had an amazing panel uh, in Washington DC of like politicians and Congress people and uh, the film directors and all sorts of interesting people um, so it was a huge success in it. it we had like 15 20 people really helping with the distribution um, we don't have any of that anymore, right? Because we had a certain budget, we w went through it, and, and now um, it's almost, I have like someone w who's dedicating a couple of hours a week to help on social media, but other than that, I'm alone. Um, so when you come up with all these ideas, um, you should contact this, you should contact that. I, I, I keep those ideas and I sometimes eventually get there but if you have ideas about organizations I should contact, hey, contact them for me, please. <laughs> I mean, I would, um, that would be really helpful because, uh, uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm a one-man show right now and uh, I, need, I need your help. So the easiest thing right now, because people need concrete things, is just pay it forward, freetriptoegypt.com forward slash rent. That's very helpful. And ask your friends, tell your friends, um, and uh, if you know bigger organizations or something like that, that's great. But for now, just please spread, spread the message. And um, yeah, continue. Let's continue to give it some thought. Um, and uh, we're early stages, so maybe we'll be working with another organization. Maybe we'll have follow-up uh, discussions let me know. I mean, give me feedback about whether this type of meeting would be something you would want to participate in again, if you have other ideas. Um, I need your help. I need some, some guidance and support uh, as to where we go next. And uh, I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate all your participation. And um, thank you so much and uh, that you're still around <laughs> and uh, have a wonderful evening and uh, i hope our paths cross again soon thank you thank you, thank you. bye-bye thanks bye thank you peace everyone and thank, well. you. thank you thank you thank you thanks everyone thanks Tarek. thank you thanks Tarek. thanks katie thank you.